Today's bear hunting shows are more about bear shooters than they are about bear hunters. The typical show has a guy drive up in a fancy pickup truck, all decked out with all his sponsors, and he meets a guide who walks him to a tree that's over a bait where he's never been before. That's not this show. This show is for the true flannel shirt wearing bear hunters. The guys who live the life, pick the tree, choose the baits, guys with dirt under their fingernails, and burrs in their hair. If you're looking for a show with lots of kills, a few fancy trucks, and enough pixie dust product spam to make you wonder if you're watching a hunting show or an infomercial, you have come to the wrong place. So if you're a true bear man, throw in a pizza, kick back and watch the show, and don't forget to throw the crust in the bait bucket. Hi, I'm Dan Infault, and welcome to Extreme Bear Tactics. This is our very first show ever. If you have any comments or questions regarding the show, please go to our forum at huntandbeast.com and let us know your thoughts. A lot of guys are going to tell you that uh, black bears are stupid, that they're dumb. Just throw out some bait and forget about the wind and they're just going to come running. Um, but really, there's a lot more to it, and that might work on uh, small bears. Uh, you might get small bears on a regular basis by just throwing out bait anywhere and sitting on it long enough. But big black bears don't get to be 10 to 20 years old by running into every hunter's bait that they smell. They get to be 10 to 20 years old and huge animals by being smart about where they feed and when they feed. Big bears are incredibly intelligent, and the only reason we can kill them in the first place is because they succumb to coming into the bait. Uh, they get on a routine, um, but that doesn't make them dumb. They don't get to be that, you know, again, 10 to 15 to 20 year old range bears that we're looking for. We're not looking for the little ones. They don't get to be that age by not running into hunters at these baits, so they have to learn how to adapt around these baits. My cameras show that these bears come in in daylight, you put the cameras out, everybody sees it. You put a camera on a, on a bear bait, and if there's a big bear coming in, you'll have daylight pictures of them, because they get hungry, they come in. But they don't come in when you're hunting, do they? Well, they do, but they circle downwind. So, there's different ways you can combat this. Uh, my observations have been that they usually circle the bait. They smell what's in there first, and then they come in. Um, that makes it hard for a bow hunter, a little easier for a gun hunter. A gun hunter can sit back up on a hill and watch a bait from a distance. Um, a lot of people will tell you, again, that uh, bears don't circle baits, but uh, I've watched them do it personally dozens of times. And in more than one state, I've seen it in several areas. There are several ways to combat circling bears. One of my favorite uh, methods and the one we're going to talk about today is using an obstacle. And by an obstacle what I mean is a, an area the bear doesn't want to circle into. It can be an opening, it can be a beaver pond, um, something like that where he doesn't want to go. Uh, for instance, I have one spot where there's a beaver pond and the bears won't circle that uh, beaver pond because they'd have to go through the water. 
So I put my back up against the pond and to get to the, the hunt tree I actually go through the water rather than down the trail I bait on and go right up a tree in the water on the water edge. And the bear if he circles he's within range of me to kill and they can't catch my wind. It's a perfect setup. The spot where I, I, I hunted in the hunt we're going to show, I put my back up against a big clear cut. A clear cut can be another uh, uh, obstacle because they don't want to walk onto the open. In the hunt we're going to talk about today, I set up on a clear cut. There's a swamp on the back side of the clear cut and loggers had taken like 10 years back all the trees and cleared an area right up to the swamp. The bears want to live in that dark cool swamp. There's water down there, there's flowing water and it's just thick and nasty. That's where the bears are living and they don't want to walk in that open broad daylight clear cut. So I put my bait at the edge of the swamp and my back up against the clear cut so the bears can't circle me. I'm hunting a, a bait we call the moose pond bait. There's been a good bear coming in here daily. Um, we set this up at the edge of the swamp. This is a pretty dense, thick, mossy swamp down here, real cool. And the reason we call it Moose Pond is because over there, there's a little lake or pond um, that's pretty deep, has water in it all year, it's pretty big. And uh, it's way out in the middle of nowhere. And it drains into this swamp in a low spot. And it stays real cool down in there. Um, it's spring water, it's really cold, and the swamp down here is, when you, you get out of the clearing and go into the swamp, it's like 10 degrees cooler. It's a real hot day. These bears like to lay down in this uh, swamp, and this is so remote. We're, we're probably four or five miles from a road, from a gravel road. Um, we get in here on old logging roads that we opened up with a chainsaw. Uh, took out the fallen trees so that we could get back here. The um, clearing behind me over here is a old slashing where he probably did a little overcutting. There isn't much in it for, for new growth trees. And uh, it's just all solid raspberry and stuff. It's pretty open. And because of that, uh, we use that as a barrier. We just barely get in the swamp. And then when the wind blows out over that, that opening, the bears can't circle us without walking into a wide open area. So the big bears can't get downwind of us and circle us. That's the point of where we got this stand placement. Um, this is the first time this spot's being hunted.
got me a bear. Right at the last minute, and we're just about to lose camera light, and I looked down and saw him coming in. Never heard him. Such a tight hold on her that you could uh, hardly see anything coming. I heard one sneaking in behind me before, and I think it caught my wind. The wind shifted, and it wasn't going to the opening. Something came in down here, but that was the target bear. So, he looked pretty decent, so. Came in right in the trail, he's been coming in on the trail camera. I guess before it gets too late, I better get down and uh, go get Chad, and we'll get this thing out of here. And, and uh, pack her up and head back, now that we're uh, two for two on bears. Okay, uh, when I got the bear, I went right back to camp, got uh, Chad, got a tarp, got a saw to cut a couple poles with so we can carry the, the bear out, and got back over here as quick as possible so we'd have as much light as possible, but it looks like it's going to be black anyways by the time we get in. This is as far as I can get a truck, and this is a, uh, an old, old logging road that two years ago I opened up with a chainsaw to get back this far, and really not many people use it but me. Um, I got to still go about a quarter mile that way on foot to get to where I was hunting, and the bear ran another hundred yards past that. So we got our work cut out for us. Uh, let's go. Alright, I'm just checking the compass to get a directional reading because we're just starting to enter the timber about a quarter mile from the truck and I know the bear ran in a semi-circle and ended up somewhere over here. It would be real easy to get turned around on a trail like this tracking and people get real excited and they want to run off on their own and find the bear and such and that's the reason why I didn't get down right away and go on my own. You should always go with a partner and you should always take compass readings. If I went the wrong way here I ended up going straight. I could go six or seven miles before I even hit a logging road. So it's important to know the direction back to, to the opening where your truck is. And I got to be pretty accurate on that too, right down to the degree, because if I hit off a little bit, I can miss this whole entire slash cutting up here and end up wandering off into who knows where. So you got to keep a level head in this woods, and it's not for amateurs. You really have to know what you're doing. Well, let's go find that bear. blood. Stand in last blood. I think I'm off the trail. I would think he just stayed on this, but I think he does. Where is it? Right here. Last blood right there, so. You want to say, right there's blood right all over here. Oh, look at that tree. Yep. Okay. You want to say something about your partner staying on last blood before you both move ahead? 
would kind of make sense, right? Yeah, okay. You got two people like this. Uh, a lot of times you like to have the uh, the one person staying on the last blood. The one person moves ahead. And then he keeps the, uh, lets the other person know when there's the next blood and he moves up. That way you never mo lose that last blood. If you use toilet paper, that makes up for it because you mark the last blood always with the piece of toilet paper. Here's where he turned. He nailed that tree, huh? I'd say. Look at his blood spray on everything. All over it. Right here's the very. Here's the bear. Oh, ain't that good, is it? He's all right. That's about a. Is he chocolate? Look black. Yeah, he's probably about a 150 pounder, 125 pounder. You got me beat, dude. <laughs> Well, another one down. <laughs> yeah. They sure do look a lot bigger on the camera and on the trees. He's probably about uh, 125, 150 pounds dressed. He's got a pretty decent pad on him. He's got about four and a half inches. In the tree, I thought he was about a 200 pounder, and I would have said I would have said that from the pictures too on the camera. Really, I know we had some bigger bears than this coming in, but uh, I'm happy with him. It'd be a lot easier getting out of here than uh, Chad's 300 pounder. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll cut some poles, take the tarp, and then we'll. Uh, this thing went in circles. I have no idea where we are. We'll have to look at the compass and uh, head back towards the truck. And uh, I can't believe this thing made it this far. This is quite the trek for a, for a good hit. I mean, that's it's right through the vitals. Hmm. Well, cool. We got real good video of him. Uh, getting shot so I'm happy with that cut a couple poles and let's get the hell out of here no. alright All right, go ahead check this out floating around in his lungs still lit forge knock <laughs> looks a little bent but it's still ticking <laughs> I noticed the knock was missing off of it. Uh... Hunting beast green. Yeah. Let's see if I can get this thing shut off. Maybe we can use it again. The lucky one. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay. Okay, the way we get these uh, bears out of these real remote sections is we have to have two guys and we cut two pole lengths we attach them to tarps roll them up close as we can to the size of the bear and then we tie the tarps cut holes in them tie the tarps every so many feet and then each guy gets an end it's kind of tough getting through these slashings because the trees are so close and stuff but if we can stumble to uh, a game trail or something it goes in the general direction it shouldn't be too bad but uh, there's no way a guy could come back here unprepared and just drag one of these things out. You couldn't do it. You might be able to drag this one out, but not a 300, 400 pounder. So GPS says uh, that way um, 
and we should stumble into our uh, our bait. And uh, my compass says somewhere over there too. <laughs> so you should always, always have a compass and a and a GPS because uh, GPS will fail. You get in certain areas and they won't turn on and stuff like that. So you got to have backup. You still got to go old school, even if you you buy the modern stuff. Okay, this is a kind of a thick hole back here, and you really can't see real well. Um, you got a little a little hole at the bait, and the bear can get pretty close before you can see him. Um, my stand is from this position is in that pine tree over there, right about there. Um, the bait's right there. Our bear came in like this to here. And I couldn't see him until he was standing right where I'm at. I got a glimpse of him through the pine boughs. And when I fired up the camera, he froze and locked up right here. And then he waited a while. And then he turned and went to go back where he was coming. But took and walked around this route here. Came over here, and here's where you can see him on camera. Walks over here looks at the bait and he's still a little nervous about that sound he turns like he's gonna leave go down this trail stops turns around reaches over and grabs a couple of these logs and as soon as he exposed his lungs well then there I am Is it going to be fun dragging them out of here? No. In the dark? No. Why not? I say we go get Danny and I'll stay home. <laughs> Wait till you get back. 